Elon Musk is looking to raise $1 billion, this is all according to some filings from the SEC, for his new AI company, XAI. This is kind of a spinoff of Twitter or X um, that he's been running. I think it's essentially going to be trained on all of the data, all of the tweets and content that's publicly available um, on X, or not really publicly available because he's kind of locked it down and not let anyone else access the data so he can build something with it. Um, this is a really interesting story. Today, we're going to be breaking down what he plans on doing with a billion dollars, why we think this is interesting, how we know about it, and I think some of the implications for the industry um, going forward if he's successful raising this $1 billion. If you're interested in investing in an early stage startup, my company, AIbox, has just la launched its crowdfunding campaign. Yesterday, we raised an additional over $10,000 for it on Republic. We've raised over 275,000. We have around three months left of the campaign, and we're going to be raising up to $1.2 million over that time period. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description to republic.com slash AI dash box. We're essentially building a no code AI app builder and marketplace. So this is the project I probably am the most excited about in the AI space today. Welcome to the world's number one AI podcast, AI Chat. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. So the big headline here is that Elon Musk's latest venture, which is x.ai, is making headlines. They have essentially filed with the SEC the required paperwork to raise $1 billion in funding for this new AI startup. Now, I think this is kind of interesting. Um, of course, Elon Musk, he, he runs Tesla and SpaceX, um, and now Twitter, which has changed the name to X. Essentially what's happening here. Um, and I think the main, you know, the main product here is their chatbot, which is called Grok. They built this thing. I think they spun it up in like three months of training. So they put together a team and put this thing out very quickly. So in this new fundraising round, apparently they have already raised or got, you know, commitments from $135 million um, from a bunch of undisclosed investors. Um, and of course, Grok, their, their main, you know, attraction here. It is a ChatGPT, Google Bard, Anthropic Claude kind of competitor. It's described as having a quote-unquote rebellious streak, um, and it's designed to essentially tackle some some more, uh, I don't know, sketchy questions. Um, essentially, I think it's just going to answer any questions, whereas OpenAI is going to say something like, hey, I, you know, I'm not allowed to talk about X, Y, and Z topics, and I think they were trying to um, you know, be able to answer anything. So, uh, you know, in their like demo, they like asked how to make cocaine, and it gave a you know, them the recipe and said, you probably shouldn't make it, but this is how you do it, right? So that's, you know, an example of what this thing can do. In any case, uh, I think despite being in development for only um, like two or three months, it has a couple things that I think are going to make it successful in a lot of different circles. Number one, real-time internet knowledge, um, which I think is really, really big. So something that, you know, OpenAI used to have was an API to Twitter. And then when Elon bought it, you know, he cut it off. Um, Elon and OpenAI have their own history, yada, yada. But I think what's interesting here is Twitter technically, or like Twitter really is, or X is the place where news breaks. It, it hap like people, like a company will put out a statement on Twitter before it gets to anyone else. Maybe they'll put it out at the same time they do like a press release or contact the press. And so if like the most up-to-date information is happening, is being reported on, on Twitter. Like that's, that's where things happen the, the fastest. And then, you know, the next day there's going to be a bunch of news articles about it and a bunch of YouTube videos and, and the rest of it. But I think what's really interesting is Grok by being tied straight into this is going to have literal real time, not just like, oh, what's in the news today, but like before the news gets it, it, it what, as soon as the information is publicly available, it's on Twitter and it's going to be there. And I think, you know, a big part of this is obviously it's a lot easier to make a tweet than it is to write an entire article or to make an entire video, yada, yada. So it has all of its reasons why I think that's the case. But in any case, I think this is going to be very interesting um, because OpenAI, of course, like when they made their big uh, their big update at their developer day, they're like, guess what? Like now 
you know, you can get information on oh, like chat GPT that was from like April this year instead of being like 2021, which was it was before. And it's like, OK, cool, April. But like tons of stuff has happened since. And like if something's happening right now, uh, wouldn't it be awesome to know? So I think that's where Grok is going to really excel is being able to give you information like as it happens today. Like you go on there and say, you know, what's the biggest story in AI today? And it's going to be able to say, well, you know, Sam Altman just texted X, Y, and Z three minutes ago. And he said this, and this is what these people have responded. And this is the overmark sentiment on that. Like it's going to be very, very dialed into information as it plays out. So I think that's going to be essentially its strength. So Elon Musk's history with AI, I think, is really notable. Of course, everyone knows he co-founded OpenAI back in 2015 and then left the board in 2018. He said it was because, you know, he had some uh, conflicts of interest with what Tesla was doing with AI. But I think he kind of, uh, you know, I think he just had some some beef or difficulties with Sam Altman and, and maybe the rest of the board and, and where they wanted to take the company. They were He funded it originally to be a nonprofit and they changed it to a for-profit, whatever. There's that whole thing. In any case, um, I think going after this $1 billion round of funding that they're doing right now is not like a very easy task in, in today's market. Um, even Musk, who is obviously, you know, a prolific uh, entrepreneur and has done a lot of successful companies. But I do think that it's going to be, um, it's going to be possible for him. Obviously, he was able to raise $40 billion. I had to sell a lot of shares of Tesla, but he was able to raise $40 billion for uh, his acquisition of Twitter. So I think what's really interesting, though, is this whole SEC filing they've recently done um, hinted at a quote unquote binding and enforceable agreement for the sale of the remaining shares, which I think is kind of suggesting that X.AI might have secured the total amount that they're looking for. Um, so they actually might have already closed on this billion, but they I think it's only publicly stated that they have 135 million. In any case, um, in what I think is a very strategic move, Musk announced that current shareholders in X are going to own 25% stake in XAI. This is obviously due to the fact that he got, you know, a ton of his friends, a ton of his buddies to come in and buy Twitter for $40 billion with him, right? He didn't put all that was in all his own money. I'm sure he sold a lot of Tesla shares. But um, in fact, I heard that every Tesla, every person that bought Tesla shares last year was just like eating all the shares that he sold for his Twitter acquisition. But or I think this year, but in any case, um, I think it's, you know, a big part of this is that when he bought Twitter, it went down from like a 10 or a $40 billion valuation to like a 20 billion. And now maybe it's at like a 10 billion. I'm not sure um, where, where it sits right now. But in any case, uh, I'm sure, you know, all of his investors getting their investments cut in half or more are appreciative of the fact that this new company, XAI, is they're going to get essentially like a 25% stake in it. So I think that's and like, to be fair, uh, XAI is greatly benefiting from like the data on Twitter. So, I mean, it's only really possible because they're able to train on this Twitter data set and now they're protecting the Twitter data set from other people like OpenAI or Google Bard. Uh, so really they have like this very unique data set. Um, and you know what's interesting about all of this is typically like I would say for a lot of companies, maybe even Stack Overflow or others, like when OpenAI already trained on their entire data sets and like OpenAI already trained on Twitter, right? I'd be like, oh, dang, like, you cut them off from like new stuff, but really they already trained on like the entire corpus of stuff. It'd be like if Wikipedia said, okay, you know, OpenAI can't access Wikipedia anymore. It's like, okay, that's like not great, but like there's already so much content on there that's evergreen. What I think is cool about Twitter is when they cut off the access to Twitter, like, yes, there's a bunch of old stuff that they could train on for like how to write tweets or how to communicate or write stuff, right? So they get that value out of it. But the up-to-date information is what's valuable about Twitter. So by cutting it off, there's still like a serious value proposition that they're losing out on that Grok will have. So I think that's interesting. Um, in any case, I think um, everything going on, right, the 25% that they're giving to stakeholders in X, I think all of this uh, coincided with uh, Elon Musk, of course, went, um, he had an appearance at the 2023 DealBook Summit. Um, this was a, a controversial thing, right? He told... Uh, he told off a lot of uh, advertisers who were trying to boycott X and, you know, got mad at them and stuff. Um, what I do think is interesting. So XAI, this is incorporated in Nevada, and this was just incorporated back in March, but it's essentially part of Musk's um, portfolio, which is expanding. So he's got Tesla, SpaceX, the boring company, which does tunnels, Neuralink, which is neural, you know, chips in your brain that you can, people like paraplegics can control their limbs still or communicate with this. So some interesting things there. But the team behind XAI is a 
whole bunch of veterans from Google DeepMind, OpenAI, Google Research, Microsoft Research, Twitter, Tesla. And essentially, it's bringing a, like, there's a lot of very high-hitting um, AI researchers on the board here now, or are coming into the company working here. Now, I think he was able to do this because, like, to be honest, he put together the original OpenAI team. He recruited them. Um, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, if he's able to continue to recruit these high-level uh, players. And I think, you know, they all know um, that this is a very high likelihood of being very successful. Obviously, Elon Musk, he can go raise a billion dollars. He can go, um, he, he can get stuff done. He has access to the whole Twitter uh, data set. Uh, they've seen his track record. So I think it's not as hard for him to to kind of build one of these teams. Um, so Musk, on a recent Tesla earnings call, was addressing the inception of XAI. And he was uh, said that the startup was, came out of a desire to harness the potential of top AI engineers and scientists who preferred a startup environment over joining a larger established entity like Tesla. This is very interesting. Think about that, right? Like he's essentially saying like he spun up this AI startup because this is the hot thing everyone wants to work on. It's super interesting. And maybe it was hard for them to retain some of their Tesla talent, but maybe there'll be some crossover where they're still able to work on projects there that will go into Tesla. So I think with XAI's ambitious funding goal, right, a billion dollars, um, Elon's going to continue to make a bunch of big moves in the tech world. Uh, the success of Grok and its ability to differentiate itself in what is kind of becoming a crowded and competitive AI market remains to be seen. There's a ton of buzz around it. I mean, even today when I was on um, X, I saw, you know, the CEO of Twitter or X was tweeting about Grok and she said something like Grok is born and Elon Musk also um, tweeted out, you know, some sort of meme with uh, some sort of meme about Grok. So, I think it's uh, definitely a very interesting moment right now. Uh, Elon, with over 165 million followers, has the ability to, I think, you know, promote anything he wants. And so any product he, you know, he he decides to to build is going to be is going to have a lot of people knowing about it. It's, you know, um, it's not going to be it's not going to be something that becomes obscure, obsolete. So assuming the product is good, he has the marketing channels to get the, the word out. So in any case, this is going to be a very interesting project to follow. It'll be interesting to see um, what happens. You know, some people are like, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to raise a billion. K. Okay, like I have no doubt Elon's going to be able to raise one billion. He just raised 40 billion for an asset that like people were watching its valuation kind of drop and he still was able to convince people to come in with him. So um, I think this is going to be an interesting play, and I think it's going to have some big implications for the AI space. People are hinting that we're going to be able to test this thing out very soon, so that is to be uh, that is to be determined. But I'll definitely keep you updated on everything going on with this project and the viability of Grok as we're able to actually start testing it. This episode is brought to you by Clavio, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Clavio, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels. Guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance. Deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.